Now look, it'd just be perfect. I can be the fourth guy in the chair with a sheet over me. You seem to overlook one little minor detail. You can't sing. I sang this afternoon. Look, honey, we're singing Sweet Adeline. We're singing harmony. Everybody sings something different. Well, then that's just perfect. If everybody's singing something different, it won't matter what note I hit. <laughs> This is the only known footage of Lucille Ball in the Broadway musical Wildcat, which opened mere months after the final season of her show, I Love Lucy. The show only ran for a little under 200 performances and two previews before closing. Was it due to Lucy's dedication, her debilitating health, or the fact it just wasn't very good? But before we get into that, I have a thank you for my 2100 subscribers. We did it. Thank you. I've been on YouTube for a little over eight years now, and I didn't think I would ever have this many people subscribe to me watching the things that I make. It's, it's a special feeling knowing that you have a following, no matter how small or big that it is, but that you know that your art is somehow reaching an audience. It's, it's a special feeling that you just can't shake, you know? So thank you to my 2100. I hope you stick around. There's some fun stuff I'm gonna make this year. <laughs> I'm chipping away at the Dune series now, so expect that sometime in the future. It's long. All right, so enough of the shenanigans, let's dive in. I found the record for Lucille Ball's Wildcat in November of 2020, and I have low-key been obsessed with it ever since. Wildcat is a 1960s musical with music by Cy Coleman and lyrics by Carolyn Nye, and the book is by N. Richard Nash. The original production starred Lucille Ball, of course, but also Edith King, Paula Stewart, Clifford David, Don Tompkins, Howard Fisher, and Sven Svensson, as well as a very young Valerie Harper in the chorus. The plot follows Wildcat Jackson as she and her sister Janie travel to Centavo City looking for a rather lucrative oil gusher and find a foreman than the name of Joe Dynamite to help them out. But there's also a romantic kind of subplot about will they, won't they with Joe and Wildcat. That's more or less the plot. A lot of the conflict hinges on Wildcat's inability to tell the truth, um, unwillingness to tell the truth, uh, her stubbornness, her unwillingness to give up. It's a lot like Lucille Ball in a way. So N. Richard Nash is behind the book of Wildcat, and when he originally was writing the show, he pictured a young 20-something for the role of Wildcat. But Lucy was 49 at the time of the show's production. But here's why. Here's why she was in it. Nash was forced to rewrite the role after Lucy took interest in the story and offered a sizable amount for financing the entire project. But this was only due to the fact that Desilu planned on producing an episode of The Lucy Show, of I Love Lucy, where Lucy went to Broadway, which means they could, if they financed the entire project, they would own the rights to the songs and the scenery and all that, so they could use the songs in that episode of I Love Lucy, an episode that ultimately never came to fruition. Also in the contract was that Lucy could have first say over who her leading man was. She ultimately went with Keith Andes for the role of Joe Dynamite. This is Lucille Ball's only Broadway show after a failed transfer before the success of her I Love Lucy show. She was meant to transfer from an off-Broadway theater in New Jersey, or just an off-theater in New Jersey, to a Broadway show, but the show ultimately ended up closing due to financial difficulties. So this looked to rectify that injustice that apparently befell New York audiences at the time. 
The show was due to open in late October after Variety gave it a glowing review in one of its previews, but local critics were a little less enthusiastic about it. I say meant to be open because the trucks hauling the scenery to the Broadway venue it was supposed to play ended up being stranded in a blizzard on a New Jersey turnpike and it was delayed for a few months. So the actual opening was in December of 1960. Lucy's I Love Lucy co-star Vivian Vance was in the opening night audience and was photographed giving her co-star a big hug. However, the show would be hampered by lukewarm reviews during its entire run. See, people came to Wildcat expecting to see Lucy's Lucy Ricardo persona instead of an entirely different character. So throughout the run of the show, Lucy would ad-lib bits a la Lucy Ricardo much to the dismay of her co-stars, but much to the praise and general entertainment of the audiences. Also at this point, Lucille Ball had been chain smoking for several years, so her voice was not the best shape as referenced in the clip earlier. And her health had been deteriorating, so whenever Lucille Ball had to step out due to fatigue, exhaustion, any kind of illness, people demanded their money back because they were not getting what the show advertised itself to be, which was basically Lucy on stage in a musical. Around early February of 1961, she decided to step out due to chronic fatigue and some virus. She went to Florida, and when she came back, the show was only open until April 22nd, the last day that the show played due to Lucille Ball literally collapsing on stage in the middle of a musical number. The show only ultimately ended up closing because musicians in the orchestra, as members of a union, demanded that they be paid during the show's shutdowns, and this was not financially feasible. The show even cut two of its songs to give Lucille Ball a little less to do, to ease her exhaustion and like her workload a little bit, and these include the song, the, the title song, Wildcat, as well as That's What I Want For Janie, basically Wildcat's I Want song. The next notable production after the Broadway version was in Australia, where they reinstated a cut song between one of the old, old coot prospectors, Suki, and Wildcat. That show also suffered a very short, limited run. Now, you might be asking yourself, is this show really that bad that it can't play for um, a prolonged period of time? Um, having watched a production of it, not the Broadway but production, but like one from 2019, it's easy to say that a lot of fault can be put on the book. A lot of events kind of happen in very convoluted, but also obvious and maybe even cliche ways. Wildcat waltzes into this town and just so happens to be taken in by one of their own just because, like, almost due to no explanation. Even later in the show, when the same character asks Wildcat what she wants, there's no explanation as to why she decided to take her in in the first place. The show also takes place in Santavo City, Mexico, and especially towards the beginning of Act 2, there are things that maybe aren't a little totally politically correct, especially in the song El Sombrero. As far as I can tell from the cast list that I have researched, uh, they cast white people as Mexicans. Valerie Harper played a Mexican. Um, one of the actors, I believe it's Clifford David, who was also in 1776, sings in El Sombrero and he puts on an accent and he's white. Hey Look Me Over is the musical's most enduring song, its most popular song. It became Lucille Ball's staple for late night television appearances, award show appearances, where she would sometimes change the lyrics into Hey Look Him Over as kind of a you go women. But the song has been covered from everyone from like Louis Armstrong to Judy Garland, and it's pretty much a classic to this day. A lot of critics cited the issues with Wildcat being that the show kind of falls off the rails after the title song, mostly in that the music is not all that good, it's not all that catchy, lyrics are a little trite, 
and the book moves along at a sluggish pace, but also there's not enough information. Cy Coleman and Carolyn Nye, the singer, the songwriting team for the show, when describing rewriting the show for Lucille Ball said, how do you write for a woman who can only sing five notes? But not just any woman, one of the biggest stars at the time. And like, what would you, what would you have her sing when she stepped out for the first time? It had to land big or they were all going to be dead. Ultimately, what would, what could we attribute to Wildcat, Wildcat's relative obscurity? It's relative not goodness. I wouldn't fault Lucille Ball totally, although she is partly to blame due to her health and her deteriorating voice, but her popularity is what gave the project legs to begin with. I think I would call Wildcat a more rushed project made in a crucible of almost unattainable standards, almost fear of letting Lucy down. If the show had had a little more time to bake, we probably would have gotten a much fuller loaf, <laughs> if that makes sense. I didn't end up playing any of the music from the show here except for from that clip at the beginning, so if you feel so curious, go and look up the Wildcat soundtrack. It is on Spotify, it is on YouTube, it is on vinyl if you can find it because at least the first four songs slap really hard. And there, if any of the other genres suit your fancy, then you might as well go and find it out to be part of this obscure Broadway history. Well, again, I wanna thank my 2100 for subscribers for this gift that you've given me and ultimately this gift I have given to you. Thank you so much. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscription bell. It'd be really cool to see you again. Like, really cool. Alright, this is Dustin signing off, but only for now. Little hot air to fill the vacuum, then we'll be up like the rose.